Hello Divination and welcome in today's video. I'm going to show you step by step how to create a dynamic HTML sitemap page in Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to download the plugin that enables us to create the sitemap. So I'm going to come over here to plugins, click on add new and we are going to search the uh, repository. So I'm gonna search here for WP sitemap page, and you can see here it has come up and this is a five star, 168 reviews, and it's been installed on 200,000 active websites. And uh, so this is a good sign that this plugin is really, really good. All right, so now we're gonna click on install now. So once installed, we're gonna activate the plugin. Right, so to make customizations to our plugin, you need to head over here to settings and you can see here, it's now added as WP sitemap page. So you wanna click on that. So what you wanna do is to click here on how to use. So here we have all the short codes that we need to display all the uh, information that we need on our pages, for example. So this one here will display the pages. So all you have to do is to copy this code so what we're gonna do next is we're going to build the page and then revisit this uh, short codes page once we've created the uh, sitemap page. All right, so let's create our sitemap page by coming over here to pages and uh, clicking on add new. So I'm gonna open this in a new tab to just make it easier for me to just uh, go back to our short codes. All right, so let's call this page sitemap, but of course you can call it whatever you want. And then I'm gonna click here on use the DV builder. Now for this, we're gonna choose a pre-made layout just to save us time to design our layout. So I'm gonna choose a magazine layout and here we're going to go with category. So I think this one here would work best for our sitemap. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it and then click on use this layout. So as you can see, we have quite a lot of designs here on this layout. So we need to delete everything except the top part. So let's start by deleting here from the bottom upwards. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete all this because I don't need this for our design. Go ahead and do that. And then finally, we're gonna get rid of this as well. So now that we've deleted all the sections that we don't need, now it's time to add our sections for our content. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button and we're gonna go with the regular section and we're also gonna go with a single column. So what we're gonna do here is to display the short codes. We need a text module. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it. And then we're gonna start here with um, first title and our title here is going to be pages. Okay, we're gonna set this to heading two. So we're gonna highlight it, click on this drop down, and set this to heading two. Now it's time to add our short codes. So we're gonna come back over here to our sitemap. And then this is where you want to copy your short codes. So I've gone ahead and copied it. And then I'm just gonna paste it in here. Now let's head over here to the text design. So here we're going to go to text and change our font to Monster Rat. So I'm gonna search for it and then select it. For our font weight, we're gonna set this to bold. And then we also need to add our link text color. So as you can see here, our short code is working because it has pulled all this information down. So now I'm gonna go into my text color here. In fact, we need the link color. So it's this one here. So make sure you select the right tab. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is to add our link color. So I'm gonna come over here and click on the second tab. And uh, let's now go in and add our color. I'm just gonna paste it in here. So now that we've added our link color, we're gonna come over here to our ordered list. So here we're gonna go to unordered list and add our color. So I'm gonna paste it in here. And by the way, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so now that I've added that, we can also go into the list type. So right now it's set to disk. You can go in and set it to square if you want to. And the position, you can also leave it as uh, outside, or if you want, you can set it to inside. So now you can see they are slightly indented. And then what I could also do here is to add an item indent. And then here on the unordered list item indent, we can set this to 5VW, but it's up to you if you want to move things around. But as you can see here, we have so many options to really customize it. Now let's work on the heading itself. 
So here on the heading, we're just going to scroll down until we get to heading text. And remember, we set this to heading two. But if you're not sure, you can just hover over this word and click on this paintbrush tool. And this will take you exactly to what the heading is. All right. So here we are going to set our sizes. In fact, before we do that, we need to go in and set Monster Rat as our font. And then we are also going to set this to bold. And now it's time to set our sizes and we're going to set this to 3VW. And while we're here, we might as well set our sizes for our tablets and smartphones. So I'm going to click here on this little phone icon and then set my tablet to 38 pixels. And then I'm also going to do the same to the phone. And this just ensures that uh, responsively things will look much, much better. All right, so now that I've uh, set it all this up, we're now going to head over here to spacing and we are going to add a minus two VW to the margins there. So finally, what we're going to do is to add custom CSS to the module in order that we may target it later with some custom CSS for breaking up the content into columns. All right, so to do that, we're going to come over here to the advanced tab, click on CSS ID and classes and set our CSS class to column list. So now it's time to save. And then we're also going to go back into our row settings here because there's a few things that we need to do and that is to add some margins. So I'm going to click here on design, spacing and for our margin bottom, I'm going to set this to 5VW. So we can also further customize this by adding some box shadow. So I'm going to come over here, choose my box shadow. Now with that selected, I'm going to adjust my horizontal position. So over here on the box shadow horizontal position, I'm going to set this to minus 5VW. And then the vertical position is going to be zero. So I'm going to come over here set this to zero and then we're going to go here and set our shadow color and i'm just going to come all the way down here and set my shadow color now before i do that i just want to drag this all the way up because the color that i'm going to add is not going to have transparency so this is going to be the color i'm going to use and by the way if you want to use the exact same colors as i'm using throughout this tutorial i will leave a link to the post in the show notes below all right so now that we've designed this and this is looking great we can now go ahead and and save this and let's say we want to add even more items here for our sitemap all we have to do is to duplicate this a few times and then you can go in and change the titles to whatever it is you want and then you can always change the text here so let's go in and do that quickly so i can show you how easy it is to do so here we're going to change this to categories and then over here now on the short code you're going to add your short code for your categories so once you're ready with that you can just save this now as you can see here this has only shown uncategorized now this is because i don't have any categories set up so you need to make sure that you have all your categories set up for this to show correctly and any other information that you may need to show on your sitemap page but as you can see here on the sitemap there's a lot of information that you can display you can also display the uh, sitemap uh, author you can also display project products and so on so this plugin is really really amazing all right so back over here now that we've done this i'm going to hit publish so now over here what we also need to do is to adjust the css class so we're going to come into our text module Go to the advanced CSS ID and classes, and then I'm just going to replace this with flex columns. And what you could also do to differentiate these sitemaps or sitemap information, you can also go in here and change that shadow by coming over here. And let's change the color right here. So this is also very good visually to uh, let people see how different these sitemap items are. So at the moment, the only way to, to display this information is in a single column, but you can also change this by just adding a code module and adding our CSS code in there. So I'm going to add my code module and then I'm going to paste my code in here. And now you can see that we've introduced a different layout altogether, of which you can also come over here and change things around just to make things look a bit more tight. Now, this code can be found in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So make sure you can go ahead and check it out there. All right. So I'm going to save this now, save one more time, and then exit the Visual Builder and take a look at our page. Okay. So there we go. So this is our design. And you can see now the categories are showing. But as I mentioned before, you can go in and change things around here and have all sorts of information displaying on this page. 
So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.